Uh, this is Pastor Zipora, Wairu Mumaina, aka Pastor Zipi, coming to you all the way from the Pacific Northwest, right here in Washington State in the USA. And I want to take this chance to thank each and every one of you for supporting us, for praying for us, for attending our first in-person conference. Uh, we cannot tell it all what the Lord has done. We had a beautiful call to global prayer. Uh, we've been praying on Zoom for two years. I think most of you know that because you are our partners, both uh, on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, this year, God graced us with an opportunity to meet in person. It was so wonderful to meet my friends from Oregon, to meet my friends from Missouri, from Kansas, from uh, Texas, uh, from Kenya, people that we've been seeing online, but we were able to meet together. So I want to take this chance to say thank you. And of course, I want to appreciate our friend, uh, Kerie, our prestige, the host that has hosted us today at the Pacific Waves TV. Uh, I was joking with him and telling him, you know, I was a pioneer here. There's a time I used to come and minister when the TV station was starting. And I'm so grateful that the Lord has expanded his boundaries and he has continued to grow. And today it's my pleasure and my joy uh, to be able to bring to you the servant of God who has uh, blessed us uh, throughout the conference. Uh, those of you that attended, you know, I have a long time friend, a long time friend, somebody I've known for close to 20 years, a man of God that I love so much because he is full of grace. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. And so today I'm so blessed to uh, uh, bring the servant of God who has been with us throughout uh, the conference. He blessed us tremendously. We don't even want him to go back. We want him to stay here. But uh, anyway, we will have to allow him to go back and come another time. Those of you that came for the conference, uh, may the Lord bless you. Uh, may the Lord increase you. And may the Lord continue to do you good. Thank you for praying for us. A call to global prayer was born in 2021 on May 8th uh, when we were all ravaged by COVID-19. And I think a number of you know my story. So when the Lord healed me from COVID-19 and rescued me from that time when people were dying in millions, he put a burden in my heart that I should start a prayer. Of course, I can tell you, I wasn't uh, starting the ministry to continue. I was just thinking it was that season of COVID-19. But glory be to God, because people were hungry, they were thirsty. They were looking for a place where they could go and call upon the name of the Lord. And so, uh, according to Jeremiah 33, verse 3, which is mainly our theme, the Bible says, Call unto me, and I'll show you great and mighty things that you do not even know. So we started calling on the Lord, and I tell you, God has been so gracious. He has given us people from the five continents of the world. We pray together every Saturday for one hour. If you are in Pacific time, it is 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every Saturday. You can calculate the time on your time zone and join us. So today, I want to bring to you the servant of God who has been with us. And uh, if you are in Washington State... Uh, our, our friend is still here a few more Sundays. I would welcome you to come and listen to this apostolic teaching of the Word of God. So thank you so much, my host, uh, Brother Carrie. I would love to introduce the servant of God who is with us today. And um, some of you know him. Others are going to know him the first time today. So welcome, my friend, Reverend Nick. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you in Washington. Thank you so much. Yes. It's such been a wonderful time. Amen. Amen. Now, you have really blessed us. Amen. I don't know how you feel about Washington. I'm telling you, Washington has become another home for me. Amen. Away from home. <laughs> Praise Those the Lord. Uh, places where you go to. Yes. And the hearts are open for the ministry of the word. Amen. I'm so glad to be here. Amen. So glad to be here. So grateful that you took your time. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you that don't know Reverend Nick, he comes from my village. You know my village? <laughs> my village is Machakos. Yes. So many people know me as Pastor Zippy from Machakos. So my friend is from Machakos. Mm -hmm. 
He left his family, he left his church, he left his ministry to come and be a blessing to us. Mm -hmm. And today we are so grateful to have you, man of God. Thank you. I can't tell you how many people want you to visit their churches, uh -huh. how many people want you to visit their fellowship. Uh -huh. Maybe you can ask God to extend the day to be like 30 hours instead of 24. <laughs> Yes. So, but we are so grateful. Amen. Please greet our viewers and uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. Hey, viewers, I want to greet you this wonderful morning. It is morning here. I don't know where you're watching us from, your time zone. Amen. But it's, it's morning here. They say in German, Guten Morgen. Mm -hmm. And my German ends there. Well, uh, we want to welcome you. My name is Nick. As you've heard, Nick Musembi. I'm a minister of the gospel. I come from UK. Call it UK Ukambani. <laughs> Right in Machakos, the place to be. Amen. And uh, the Lord has been gracious and married mm -hmm. to one uh, beautiful female wife. Uh, her name is Irene. I have two children. I pastor a church. I'm also a man under authority. Yeah, right in Machakos town, my spiritual authority is Bishop Charles Kababu, and I bless the Lord for him. This is my 23rd or so years as a pastor and uh, mm -hmm. i thank god for the impact the lord is releasing uh even to affect lives with the gospel i tell people the gospel is the greatest investment for mankind and so i am so grateful i want to request you to tune and join us tag some friends join us for a wonderful time we are going to have a powerful moment of edification and uh, impact in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. Wow, wow, wow. <clears throat> yes, thank you, our viewers. I am back here again. And uh, I just want to take a small break so that uh, we can give the man of God an opportunity to share the word of God. And I'm so grateful. Stay right there, tuned in. Don't move. I tell you, there's so much that the Lord has in store for us. And so we are going to take a short break. And after the short break, the man of God will come. He will share the word. Even me, I'm going to be sitting somewhere at the back of the tent so that I can be blessed and take my notes. And thank you very much. Once again, a call to Global Prayer Partners. We love you. We appreciate you. And we are looking forward to seeing you next year if you do not make it this year. May the Lord bless you. I welcome all of you. And uh, let's uh, hear what the servant of God has. Pacific waves, Pacific waves TV. Pacific waves TV. Hey, you are welcome back. Welcome back this Pacific Wave TV. And we are in for a powerful time. We thank God for that powerful song that has just ended up. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 9 that worship God if you want the best. Because worship opens doors to all his goodness. That's the message Bible. As I said before, my name is Apostle Nick and I'm coming to you live to bring the ministry of the word. And before I open up the scriptures and maybe pray a short prayer, I want to kindly make a request this wonderful moment. If you can tag some friends to join us this wonderful time, and if you can share this telecast uh, to several groups and be able to reach out to someone, you know, uh, you're going to participate in outreach and evangelism. There's somebody somewhere waiting to hear just one word from God that is going to change their lives forever. And so I want you to do that. Please tag some friends, share this telecast in groups on Facebook, in different social media platforms. Let's reach out to many people as much as possible, even for this powerful moment of the word of God. Allow me to make a prayer. Then I'm going to uh, listen. I'm going to open up the scriptures. We're going to hear what heaven has in store for us this wonderful moment once again i told you my name is apostolic i come from a ministry called gospel confirmation center gcc right in machakos that is the country of kenya uh, machakos is 
uh, 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 not far away from the CBD, I mean from Nairobi, the capital city. And so we welcome you. Let me make a prayer. Heavenly Father, we glorify your name this wonderful moment, even as we hearken to hear your voice. The Bible says in John 10, 27, that my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. We pray as your word is coming to us, may it come to us in power, in clarity, yet in simplicity, even to deliver everything wrapped up in it. Thank you for my audience this wonderful moment as we dine at your table. May you receive all the praise and honor for the powerful things you are going to do in this telecast service. We glorify you, we honor you, and this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, I want to share a powerful topic this morning, and my title of my message this morning is Generational Impact. Yeah, Generational Impact. Why am I giving it that title? It's because God's will for us, God's will for us is that we don't just exist in this life merely but we be able to live a life of impact and the impact must not just be generational actually it's supposed to be transgenerational listen generations should thank god that you live in such a time you know families should thank god that you existed and lived in such a time because the kind of life you are meant to live you are supposed to impact cities, impact families, impact lives, even days yet future. They must thank you that you lived in such a time. You know, there are people that just exist in statistics. Have you heard people asking, do you know people of that company? Or do you know people who are in this church this particular year? And you hear people saying, there was John, there was uh, Alice, there was you know, uh, has born among others. <laughs> My prayer for you, don't just be among others, be among those people who will be remembered why you lived and how you caused an impact in their life. Praise the living God. So I want to make these statements as an introduction. Those who have heard me minister, you know, my sermon's flow in a certain way of outline. I want you to know this. Number one, is that God wants us to be men and women of impact. Yeah. God wants us to be men and women of impact. Number two, I want you to understand you are not empty. God has invested in you so heavily. He has invested in you so richly that there is something you carry for this generation. Apostle Paul says, we have this treasure in the earthen vessels. You know, NIV says we have this treasure in the jars of clay. That means you are not empty. The day you gave your life to Jesus, heaven invested in you so powerfully. Dr. Miles Monroe one time said that one of the richest places to be or you can visit is the vine, is the, is, is the tomb. You know, is the tomb. Because he said right there where there's a symmetry, there are people that were buried with songs they never sang, with buildings they never built, with, uh, you know, powerful talents that never became a reality. And my prayer is the same case that Dr. Miles said, that you may die empty. Dying empty how? Dying empty having released everything that God has invested for you, for your generation. And so it is God's will for you to live a life of impact. Number three, I want you to know that there is grace that is sufficient for you to live a life of impact. Yeah, there is grace that is sufficient. When I'm talking about grace, I mean everything you need for a life of impact is available from God. God is not limited. Anything you need and everything you require to live a life of impact has been supplied by God. So the grace is sufficient. Don't allow your present situation, don't allow your present circumstance to make you think you are limited to live a life of impact. No. God has released sufficient grace for you to live a life of impact. So I want us to look at a person in the Bible that we can learn from on how we can live a life of impact. 
Uh, the Bible is full of powerful men and powerful women that God used to cause an impact in their time. And I want us to pick one lady. I know there are so many men in the Bible, but there is a one woman I want us to highlight her life and see what can we learn from her and apply the same principles. And so also we may be able to live a life of impact. And that woman is Ruth. Ruth. Yeah. Do you know there are two books in the Bible written after women? One of the books is Esther. Well, Esther was a Jewish girl. So you could obviously say probably Esther being a Jewish girl, she have found her way in the Bible and has a book. But Ruth, for those who know Bible history, Ruth is the opposite of Esther. Ruth was not a Jew. Ruth was a Moabites, a woman who came from a pagan nation that is called Moab. Can you imagine that? They never worshipped God of Israel. They never worshipped the true God. And Ruth rose up from such a background, ah, rose up from such a difficult and dark background, and Ruth caused an impact in her time. Do you know later she got married to a man called Boaz, and together they gave birth to Obed, Obed gave birth to Jesse, Jesse gave birth to David, and David became the great grandfather of our Lord Jesus. Actually, the lineage of Jesus, Ruth is part of it. Can you imagine that? That means you can rise from any environment. You can rise from any circumstance. You can rise from any situation and become a powerful man and a powerful woman of impact. I always tell people this statement. Don't allow your background to put your back on the ground. Wow. Don't allow your background to put your back on the ground. Don't allow your present situation to make you think you are disqualified for impact. Don't allow your present challenge and storms to make you think you are disqualified for impact. Yesterday when I was praying in the morning and I was just seeking the Lord in my devotion time, I, 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 I felt this conviction in my spirit. Uh, tell my people, they say it's the Lord, that every crisis has an expiry date. Yeah, every crisis has an expiry date. Please don't expire with your storm. Don't expire with your challenge. Outlive it. By the time you are done with the storm, you will not be expired but refired, even for greater days ahead of you. So the same God that was able to pick up such an insignificant woman from a difficult, pagan, dark background is the same God we serve today. And the same grace is available. Actually, even a greater grace. Because Ruth lived in the old covenant. We are living in the best covenant in our time. And if Ruth could rise up in the old covenant and become a woman of impact, then how much more us living in the time of grace, living in the better covenant that her guy prophesied and said the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. There is grace for you. And I pray for those listening to me this wonderful moment. If you are in a difficult situation, if you're in a difficult challenge right now, I pray may you receive encouragement. May you receive an anointing and power to make you rise up and begin advancing towards your life of impact in Jesus' mighty name. You too can become a man of impact, can become a woman of impact. Glory to God. Now listen, I want us to open up our Bibles in the book of Ruth, chapter number one. I will pick several scriptures and then we are going to learn some powerful principles of impact in life. Amen. The book of Ruth, praise the living God. The book of Ruth is so, is so known, it's popular for only one verse. <laughs> There's a verse in Ruth where we only read during weddings. You know that place in verse number uh, 16 that says, uh, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your God shall be my God. We only read that scripture there during church weddings. But there's powerful revelations we can pick from the book of Ruth that we can learn from in matters impact in life. 
So verse number one, Ruth chapter number one and verse number one. The Bible says, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem of Judah went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Verse number two. The name of the man was Elimelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to the country of Moab and remained there. They camped there. Verse number three. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. Now they took wives of the women of Moab. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Then both Malon and Kilion also died. Ah, uh, so the woman survived with her two, uh, her two sons and her husband. That means the two sons died, and the husband also Elimelech died. Verse number. Let's jump because of time. Uh, let's jump to verse number six. It says. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Praise the living God. So the Bible talks about in verse number 15, just jump there. It says, and she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said... And treat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. Where you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. And the story continues there. Praise the living God. As I begin sharing from this book, I want to give a caution as I, as I start. The Bible begins by giving us a history of a family. Of this man called Elimelech and his precious wife called Naomi and their two children, Malon and Kilion. Now the Bible is careful to let us know even where they lived. It says they lived in Bethlehem of Judah. They lived in Bethlehem of Judah. And then there was a challenge in Bethlehem. What happened? Famine came. There was no food. There was hunger. And this family made a mistake that most of us do, or some of us do. They left Bethlehem. Listen, the word Bethlehem means the house of bread, the house of provision. That means this family was actually living in a prophetic jurisdiction. They were under a prophetic place where the grace of provision was available. But there was a challenge because even when you are born again and even when you are living for God, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous man. But it says, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous man, but the Lord delivers him from them all. That means even when afflictions come to a righteous man, they have no permission to finish them. They have no permission to destroy them. God has an area, has a grace that he can release to deliver every righteous man from all the affliction. But this family, even though they were in a prophetic location, they were in a prophetic place where the grace of provision was there, they left during crisis. Listen, you must be careful the decisions you make when you go through challenges and crisis. Praise the living God. They left that place and unfortunately they went to a pagan nation. To a pagan nation. And do you know when they went there, they experienced loss. They thought going to a pagan nation, they will survive. There is food. They are going to enjoy their lives there. But look at what happened to them. Naomi lost her husband. Naomi lost her two sons. I mean, when she was coming back to Bethlehem, she came back a wretched woman with nothing, full of sorrow and in pain. Because every time you leave, 
your prophetic location, you expose yourself to serious consequences from the enemy. Praise the living God. Because outside God, there is no absolute 100% safety for anyone. The Bible says, War unto the man that goes down to Egypt. Uh -huh. War unto the man that goes down to Egypt. You know, Egypt in the Bible is a depiction of the world. And so when you got born again, God took you away from the world. From this, not, not, not living here, but took you from the world of sin and the domain of the devil. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. And so the Bible says, War unto anyone that goes down to Egypt. Have you taken note? Every time you hear the word Egypt in the Bible, it, it doesn't say they went up to Egypt. No, it always says they went down. Because every time you go to Egypt, it's a dissension, it's a going down, it's a downfall. Praise the living God. And so they went to the Moab country and they faced very serious losses there. You must remain where God wants you to remain. Never leave your prophetic location. Never leave your prophetic area of operation. Because you see, there was famine in Bethlehem, but the Bible says later God visited them. The Bible says in verse number, uh, verse number six, it says, then she arose with her daughters-in-law, this is Naomi, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people in Bethlehem by giving them bread. Do you know, even if there was famine in Bethlehem, nobody died. Nobody died. There is no record in this book that is showing anybody died in Bethlehem out of this challenge. But in Moab, where there was provision, where there was success, quote-unquote, people died there. Naomi lost her husband. Naomi lost her two sons. But in Bethlehem, nobody died. The Lord visited them. Because every time you remain in your divine jurisdiction, you may suffer, but the suffering is for a while. Every time you remain in divine location, you may go through a challenge, but the challenge is only for a while. Every time you remain in your prophetic location, you may go through a crisis, but the crisis is only for a while. We serve a God that remembers his people in Bethlehem. Oh, praise the living God. And I pray for you this wonderful moment. May the Lord who remembered Bethlehem remember you in your Bethlehem in Jesus' mighty name. But you have to remain there. I want you to make up a decision today. Make up your mind today. That doesn't matter what you go through. Never leave your Bethlehem. Uh, even if you have challenges, you have no friends, you are going through storms, crises, and challenges, remain in your Bethlehem because we have a God who remembers us in Bethlehem and provides bread. And because I know there are people listening to me that you have been living for God, you have remained in your Bethlehem despite of challenges, mockery, crises, and storms, I pray. May this preaching today, I come to you as a prophet of God. I say, may this preaching today be your season of receiving your bread. Whatever your bread is, may the Lord supply it in your Bethlehem in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, the Bible says when Naomi went to Moab, God has a way of turning negatives into positives. God has a way of turning negatives into positives. Right in the country of Moab, Naomi's sons got married. They got married to two wonderful ladies. One of them is called Orpah, and the other one is called, uh, is called Ruth. They got married. And later those sons died. Naomi's husband, Elimelech, also died. And then, when God visited Bethlehem, Naomi decided to go back. But now she was old. 
and she is here telling these two daughters in law listen you guys go back to where you came from if because i have no other son to give you even if i give birth to a son now you can't wait for them to grow up and marry you and so i want you to just go back to where you came from to your gods to your people and allow me to go back where i came from also and that's the moment when orpa kissed naomi and left went back but ruth refused ruth refused ruth told naomi i'm not letting you go never that's why we find the most common statement in the book of ruth where ruth tells naomi i can't leave you where you go i will go where you stay i will stay your people shall be my people your god shall be my god i will not let you go and ruth clung unto naomi until later you see a turn around in the life of ruth and from being a widow she rose up to become a powerful woman of impact yeah what can we learn what are the principles of generational impact what are the principles i'll give you four points and then i'm going to pray at the close of this telecast and you are going to be blessed i pray that god is going to give you grace to apply these principles because if they worked for Ruth, they can work for us even in our time in jesus mighty name number one ruth had right connection ruth had right connection every time you connect rightly as a child of god you begin activating the grace of impact in your life yeah connections go a long way to determine how your life will be i tell people this statement your connection will determine your collection what you collect along the way will be determined on how you connect today i repeat again your connection in life will determine your collections in life your network in life will trigger your net worth in life show me your networks i'll show you your net worth show me your connection i'll show you your collections and so how you connect today determines how you're going to be impactful tomorrow listen ruth grew up and she met a lot of people in her life she met a lot of women a lot of men a lot of young men she grew up in in moab as a moabite and she met powerful people but do you know something that ruth met one woman in her life her name is naomi and she said i have met many other women i have met a lot of men but this woman that i am meeting today or i have met today she's a different kind of a woman ruth understood this is a right connection no wonder she tells naomi i will not let you go i can't let you go my sister has gone back myself i will not go because she understood the connection she found was a right connection a right connection and i pray for you one of the prayers i'm going to pray for you is that may god connect you rightly in this season if there's any wrong connection in your life whatsoever we pray for a total disconnect and a termination of that connection in jesus name because if you continue having wrong connection in life is going to affect a lot of things within your walk of faith yeah and not just connection with men also attitude behavior character whatever you connect yourself with if it is wrong it's going to be poisonous and it's going to affect your destiny and compromise a life of impact within your work. There's a man in the Bible by the name of Abraham. When Abraham called, was called out by God, God told Abraham, Abraham, come out from your people. Yeah. Come out from your country. Come out from your kinsmen. And God told Abraham, and follow me, I'll take you to a land that I will show you. And Abraham was given very straight and clear instruction. Come out of your people. Come out of your country. But when he was coming out, out of sympathy, 
he brought along a wrong connection. I think out of sympathy, he saw one of his nephews who was an orphan by the name of Lot. And Abraham brought Lot into his life, contrary to the instructions of God. And later, you know what happened? The workers of Lot and the workers of Abraham began having arguments and fightings until at some point Abraham had to make a decision. And he said, wait a minute, this is too much now, Lot. We have to part ways. And the Bible says, Abraham told Lot, now choose where you want to go. If you choose north, I will go south. If you choose west, I will go east. And Abraham had to make a radical decision at that point and make a disconnect with Lot. Yeah. And the moment Abraham parted with Lot, read your Bible well. The Bible says, after Abraham separated from Lot, then God told Abraham, now Abraham, lift up your eyes from where you are. He told him as far as your eyes can see, I give you the land. He told him, look at northward, southward, eastward, westward, as far as your eyes can see, I give you the land. God never gave him the land until he was disconnected from Lot. Listen, Lot can be people, Lot can be a behavior, Lot can be a character, Lot can be an attitude that is negative, contrary to the will and the statutes and the commands of God. And every time you have wrong connection in life, it will poison your impact as a child of God. And so the question I have this morning is this. How can you know that your connection is right? How can you know that your connection is right as a child of God? Number one, right connections are godly. There we go. Right connections are godly. That means they please God. There will be spirit of reverence when you are connected rightly. That means you will honor God. You will live for him. You will, you will revere him. You will fear the Lord. That means if there is anybody in your life, if there is any spirit, any character, any company of people, and they are not making your life godly, pleasing before God and, and living for God and, and living a life that fears God, then you are wrongly connected. You need to disappear. We have a famous statement in Kenya we call Murife. That is where Murife applies very well. Murife ran and ran. Because any connection that is not godly will compromise your impactful life. Ah. How do you know that your connection is right? Number two, it pushes you closer to the things of God. Yeah. It pushes you closer, closer and closer into the things of God. That means when you are rightly connected, there will be there will be passion for the things of God more and more. If you see someone comes into your life, you used to pray and you stop praying, then you are wrongly connected. You used to serve God and suddenly you stop serving God. That connection is suspect because when you are rightly connected, the passion for the things of God will be, will be reignited. You will go closer and closer into the things of the kingdom. Number three, right connections will take you further away from evil and wickedness and sin. Right connection will take you further away from evil, wickedness, and sin. That means if the connection you have is making you sin, making you uh, go into perversion and, and wickedness, please run away. That is an enemy of impact right there. Yeah. That's why if you have friends around you or they are pushing you into the things of the world. Yeah. And I know as I talk right now, I'm talking in the US right where I am. I'm not saying there's no sin in Africa. Of course, there is sin everywhere. But you know, this country, one of the challenges of it is too much compromise. Too much compromise. That's what happens when, when, when there's a lot of civilization, so to say. The, the devil hides in details. 
and you find people are doing things that are not pleasing to God in the in the name of they are current and they are modern. Yeah. I have seen people that born, that are born again and they begin taking funny things within no time. They are caught up in taking alcohol and they do all manner of things. But listen carefully to me. If the connection you have in life is taking you into sin and wickedness, believe me, it's going to poison your impact as a believer. So run away. If you want right connection, it will make you disappear from sin and hate sin and reject wickedness. That is why when Ruth was connected to Naomi, Naomi introduced Ruth to God, the true God. She had to disconnect from the pagan gods of Moab and she had to worship the God of Israel, the true God. When Ruth had a right connection to Naomi, huh? she, she began leaving Moab and went to Bethlehem. Yeah, Moab, a place of wickedness. Moab, a place where other gods are worshipped. And there was an intentional shift from Moab into Bethlehem, the place where God is worshipped. I'm talking about your Moab of sin. When you have right connection, you must intentionally leave your Moab, quote-unquote, and begin advancing to your Bethlehem. <coughs> Sorry. The place where God is worshipped and where he's far away from evil. Praise the living God. Number two, Ruth had Ruth had right direction. Yeah. She had right direction. I've mentioned right connection. Number two principle is right direction. You hear Ruth saying. In verse number 16, where you go, I will go. Yeah, where you go, I will go. You see, the going is direction. And in life, you need right direction. <laughs> I tell people this, in matters of impact, direction is more important than speed. Yeah. Direction is more important than speed. You know, you may be speeding very fast, but <laughs> uh, faster going to the wrong direction. So before you admire speed in anyone's life, can you fast check the direction? Because there are people that are running very fast, but running in wrong direction. Don't be a person that admires <clears throat> speed before Checking and confirming direction. Oh, praise the living God. There's one time in our country, I remember, uh, there was a heavy traffic along Nakuru Highway. And that time we had the governor of the day, that time, I'll not say his name because of ethics. And the governor was on this highway with a convoy of his vehicles. And then he was caught up in that traffic. Listen, then suddenly one person who was ahead driving his car veered off, diverted from the main road and began driving in one of those byways, you know, Kichakani Kule. And when he went that route, uh, the governor saw that person driving off the road and he thought this man probably knows the shortcut to avoid traffic. And so he instructed the convoy... <laughs> Uh, can you follow that man? And when the convoy of the governor followed this man, every other person also began following the convoy of the governor. And they all assumed that the man who is leading the way, he knows a shortcut. They didn't know that the man was actually going to his home. He has arrived. <laughs> and so this man is driving, and through the rear mirror, he is seeing a lot of people following him. He didn't care. He thought maybe they are going for a barrio or something else. He me drove, opened up his gate, entered his house, and shut the gate. You can imagine the drama <laughs> that was there that day. Everyone began turning around and going back to the main road. That's why I tell people, don't just follow people for the sake of it. You need to check the direction. In matters of impact, 
Direction is more important than speed. I'll repeat that again. Direction is more important than speed. Praise the living God. So, how do you gauge right, connect, right direction in matter of impact? Number one, they lead you in the right path. They lead you in the right path. Number two, they make you purpose-driven. When you are following the right direction, let me tell you, right in you, there will be passion to go all the way. That is why Ruth is telling Naomi, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. You know, what he's telling Naomi, I am ready to pay the price because this direction is right. I am ready to pay the price. It doesn't matter the price. I'm going to pay it. Where you live, I will live. Where you stay, I will stay. Where you lodge, I will lodge. She is willing. That is passion in Ruth. And every time you are in the right direction, your life becomes purpose-driven. Yeah, it becomes purpose-driven. Uh, you have a passion because you fix your eyes to the prize. When you are also uh, in right direction, you become purpose-driven. What I mean by purpose-driven is that you pursue until you possess. The word purpose has several meanings, biblically speaking. One of the powerful meanings of the word purpose is that purpose means the original intent. Another meaning of the word purpose is that purpose is a compound word. A word with two words. The first three letters in the word purpose means pursue. The last four letters, P-O-S-E, mean possession. That means when you are purpose-driven, is that whatever you pursue, you don't settle until you possess it. That is why Ruth is telling Naomi, I am paying the price all the way. Where you stay, I will stay. That is a purpose-driven woman. Because the connection she had and the direction was right. Praise the living God. Number three or four about purpose, I mean right direction, is that right direction also will make you fix your eyes on the authentic. Yeah. When you have right direction in life, your eyes are fixed on the authentic. What I mean, your eyes are fixed on the original. One of the schemes of the devil, when you are pursuing an authentic destiny, he brings counterfeit offers along the way. Yeah. He brings counterfeit offers along the way. And some people become victims of counterfeit because they are shortcuts. They are shortcuts and they look so glamorous. They say not all that glitters is gold. Yeah. Not all that glitters is gold. Do you remember Joseph? God showed Joseph a powerful dream of him becoming a prime minister in Egypt. But as he was pursuing the destiny, at one point he got employed in the house of Potiphar. And that was a good job. I mean, Potiphar was a senior government official. Employed Joseph and paid him well and made him in charge of everything. But while he was there, just an inch away from the prime minister's office, an offer came. Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with Joseph. Wanted to make him abort his destiny. It was a, an offer that looks good in the eyes of men. Because maybe if you could have slept with Potiphar's wife, he could have gotten promotion. Potiphar's wife could have talked to the boss and told the husband, you know, add salary to this young man. He's a good young man. Yeah. But Joseph understood this is a counterfeit offer. This is not my destiny. There is something greater ahead of me. This is not what I saw in my dream. And Joseph overcame that counterfeit offer and was able to enjoy his destiny later. Listen, when you are in the right direction, beware of counterfeit offers from the enemy. They come to lure you, to tempt you, to make you go off track, to go off the way. 
and the moment you go off the way then you lose the original and the authentic praise the living god so ruth had right connection she had right direction number three ruth had right communion right communion these are principles of impact right connection right direction number three right communion that's why she's telling naomi your people shall be my people that is fellowship your people shall be my people and let me tell you this the people that spend around you the people you surround yourself with will either make you have impact in life or make you not have impact in life and Ruth understood if I'm going to have right communion which is fellowship then it has to be uh, the people that matter and fear God right communions are very key why because they edify they build the Bible says when we gather together one has a psalm one has a song one has a hymn one has a prophecy and the bible says when all these graces come together they come to edify all of us that is why when you come in a house of god and you join in a fellowship of people that are born again you may come to church when you are discouraged but when you leave the service suddenly you are encouraged you are edified and you feel much better it's because of the right fellowship that is there they edify another thing about right communion when you are in the right communion you will be a partaker of the brother's keeper grace i want to repeat that one you will be a partaker a recipient of brother's keeper grace do you know why because when you are company of right fellowship people will be concerned about your life yeah when you go through a challenge they will stand with you when you miss a service they will reach out they ask why is why is this sister you know why is this brother when you're in the right communion there'll always be a brother's keeper uh, uh grace do you remember simon peter he was in the company of disciples led by jesus and one time jesus told simon 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 the devil wanted to sift you like wheat to finish you completely but i prayed for you simon i prayed for you that means because of simon being in the right communion he received prophetic intercession for his preservation yeah jesus looked from far and he saw the devil and the devil was coming to finish simon peter was coming to finish him completely and right where jesus was he began praying for this uh, this brother he began praying for Simon and later he tells Simon listen the devil wanted to sift you like wheat finish you completely but because of this communion I prayed for you you see one of the fastest ways that the devil can use to finish you is to get you out of right communion yeah that is why when you see a voice that is taking you away from your church taking you away from brethren that fear God, eh? begin resisting that voice very seriously. Because when you are outside communion, it is easier for the enemy to finish you. When we are together, the Bible says one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. And so you must remain in that fellowship. The other sign of right communion is when you are in that communion, it attracts special anointing yeah when you're in that communion it attracts special anointing the bible says in psalm 133 how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together not alone when brethren dwell together in harmony he says it's like the precious oil that falls from the head down to the beard down to the garments the oil is precious that means that oil can only be uh, released when you are in the company of brethren he says how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together that word dwelling there it means staying in communion for a long time 
Yeah. Staying in communion for a long time. And the Bible says in that scripture, the last verse, for that is where the Lord commands a blessing. Do you know there are different types of blessings? And Psalm 133 calls this kind of blessing as commanded, not negotiable, not suggestive, but commanded. That means nothing can stop it. It's like a missile that has been released from God. When there's a commanded blessing, nothing can intercept. Nothing can stop it. Because it has your address. It has P.O. Box, your address. It comes straight where you are. Why? Because you are right in right communion. Number four principle, as I wind up then pray, is that you need right connection. You need right direction. Right communion. The other principle of impact is right positioning. Hallelujah. Hope you are getting blessed this wonderful morning. Where I am this morning. Right positioning. Do you know when Ruth arrived in Bethlehem, something happened? This one I want to read in chapter 2 and verse number 1. The Bible says, There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth of the family of Elimelech. This is Sonko. His name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Please, let me go to the field. Uh, underline verse 2. Let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor. You see, when Ruth arrived in, in Bethlehem, she had every reason to have ulcers. She had every reason to remain in the house and have pity party. She had every reason to be depressed and, you know, disconnect from people. But Ruth never remained in the house. In chapter 2 of Ruth, verse 1 and 2, she said to Naomi, Naomi, allow me to go to this particular field. That means I need to be somewhere positioned. And when she left and went to the field, if you read the other verses, that is where Boaz came. Boaz was a rich man who owned that field. And when Boaz came, he identified and he saw Ruth right in the field there. That means she was positioned rightly. Let me tell you, there are people in this life we call destiny connectors, destiny helpers, destiny promoters. Like Boaz, they will not spot you in the house. <laughs> they will spot you when you are positioned somewhere where God expects you to be. Many people have missed out on bosses in life. People God has sent to come and push you to your next level. Do you know when Boaz came, he found Ruth, a hopeless woman, a widow that is speaking left of us? A widow that is hopeless has nothing. And because she was rightly positioned, her story changed. Boaz married Ruth. Together they gave birth to, to who? To Obed. Then they gave birth to Obed, uh, to, to Jesse. Then Jesse gave birth to David. David is a great grandfather of our Lord Jesus. Praise God. Do you know why? Because though God is omnipresent, listen to me carefully. Though God is omnipresent, he is everywhere. He doesn't meet you everywhere. That's a very powerful statement right there. I want to repeat again. Though God is everywhere, he does not meet you everywhere. He is a God of location. He is a God of appointment. He is a God of divine positioning. You must be available somewhere where God wants you to be so that he may release impact in your life. Yeah. Even the day of Pentecost, Jesus was so particular about the location where Pentecost would take place. He told his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem. Don't live there. And the Bible says they were there not only in Jerusalem, but also in a particular room that is called the upper room. 
when the Holy Ghost came, the only people that were there in the upper room are the ones that received the power and the baptism and the Pentecost fire. Yeah. And if Simon Peter could have made a mistake to go to Galilee or to go to, 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 where? to Samaria, he would have lost it. Because our God is a God of location. So when you're talking about divine or right positioning, I'm going to speak three things that are going powerful. I'm going to pray. Number one is your right position. Number one must be spiritual. You must position yourself rightly spiritually. Yeah. In the spiritual realm or in the spiritual world, there are levels and positions. Yes, there are. The writer of the book of Revelation gives us insight into that. John, the revelator. In chapter 1 and verse 9 and 10, uh, verse 10, John is saying he was in the Isle of Patmos for persecution because of the name of Christ. And then he says, in verse 10, I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. John says, I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. But you know, in chapter number 4, God wants to release powerful things in the life of John. In chapter 4, verse 1 of Revelation, God tells John, I mean, John says, Behold, uh, a voice spoke to him like a trumpet, and the voice told John, Come up here, and I will show you things that must take place. Come up here is a shift of location. Chapter 1 is in the spirit, but in chapter 4, he's being invited to come up here spiritually. That means, John, if you don't rise up to a certain level spiritually, there are certain things you cannot achieve or, or, or get. There's a download you can't receive from above. Praise God. And so one of, your spirit, one of your positioning must be spiritual. You must begin rising up in the spiritual realm and occupy high places. Our God is a God of high places. High, even Him is seated in a high place. When the Holy Ghost came in Pentecost, they were in an upper room, a high place. Huh? When John wanted to receive some powerful uh, vision from God, he was told, come up here. And listen, I challenge you today, come up here spiritually. Number two, positioning must be also physical. Must be physical. Yes, of course, you are a spirit being, but also you are, you are, your spirit is in a body. You must be somewhere physically. That's why I tell people who keep on telling us, eh, mchungaji, sita kuja kwa ibada, tuko pamoja katika roo. Apana, tunaitaji mwili yako na roo yako. <laughs> eh? People who tell you, I will not come for that service, but we are together in the spirit. Listen, we need your spirit and your body. Yeah. Yeah. With that, the seat we are having in church is not sat by spiritual people. It is sat by physical people you can see. Yeah. We need your spirit and your body. And so you must also be available physically. There is a woman in the Bible by the name. That thing has made me feel like laughing. You know, we are together spiritually, not physically. We need your physical appearance and also your spiritual appearance. Those two are important. There's a woman in the Bible by the name of, uh, her name is withheld, but the woman with the issue of blood. You know that story? The one that went and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. When that woman heard about Jesus, the Bible says she left her home and went physically to the road where Jesus was passing and she held the, the helm of Jesus' garment and she got her healing. Listen to me. Those who know me, they know I am very deep with my scriptures and my sermons and I've done research a lot in the Bible and I realized this road why Jesus passed that day? He never passed there again. Can you imagine that? The road where this woman went to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, Jesus never passed that road again. Yeah. So the woman had to be properly timed. She had to time herself and be available somewhere physically at the right time time and she collided with her miracle every there are things that require you to be available somewhere physically at the right time 
for God to release what he has in store for you. That is why the rewards of God are never released in absentia. When God wants to reward you, he doesn't reward you in absentia. Hapo ndipo Mungu anakubalia na muhenga. Muhenga moja alisema asiyekuepo na lake halipo. Mungu pia kwa hiyo group yuko. Eh asiyekuepo physically eh, pia baraka yake haipo. Yeah. You must be available physically so that God may also release reward for you. The other point about uh about about right positioning is building your capacity. Grow. Grow. As you come into right position, build your capacity. That's why you see the capacity of Ruth changed suddenly. When she was rightly positioned and she met the right person, her capacity changed. She didn't die as a poor woman. No. Her lifestyle, her CV, her value, her capacity changed. Praise God. What a powerful word this wonderful moment. I want to pray for you this wonderful time. Thank you for having me and taking time to listen. I pray even those who are going to tune in later and listen to this word is going to bless their lives. In the meantime, in case you came when I was preaching, I kindly ask you, share this telecast, tag some friends, listen to it again and again. It's going to minister to you in a more powerful way in Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you this wonderful moment, even for the chance to minister your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to hearken unto your voice and being able to understand that you have called us for a life of impact. I pray this wonderful morning that everyone that has listened to me, oh God, the grace of impact is coming upon their lives. I activate those four principles to work even to our favor. Right connection, right positioning, right direction, right uh, communion. All those four principles to become a reality in us. And for your glory, oh God, you are going to uh, make us live a life of impact. And this I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for listening to us on behalf of Pacific Wave TV and my host, the man of God here, Kiarie. God bless you so much and see you again soon for another Word Impact session. This is me, Apostle Nick, coming to you live from Washington State in Jesus' name. Shalom. Pacific Waves TV. Pacific Waves TV.